Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show featuring a variety of subjects of local interest. This program was pre-recorded, so we're unable to take live calls on today's show. And now, let's talk about it. Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday. I'm your host, Peter Abarno. You're listening to KELA AM 1470. Maybe you're streaming at KELAAM.com or you're listening to 104.3 KMNT or KMNT.com. My special guest, which is a super timely show, is Laura Gregorich Bennett. She is the new principal over at Centralia Middle School and really excited to talk about this back to school. We're gonna talk about parents, uh, how you prepare for back to school, working with your children, and what your children, your students are actually saying that they want from you. And that's why this show is gonna be really a great show. So make sure that you uh, listen to the entire show. Uh, but we will be streaming the show and we will be recording it and sharing it on social media afterwards in case you want to listen to it again. And with me today, my special guest, you know, my wife told me to call you Miss uh, GB. And so that may be easier. It is. It's a lot easier. Kids and, and parents call me that. It's a mouthful to say the Greg, Greg Rich Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Principal GB is going to be something that I think a lot of students are going to call you. Yep. <laughs> right. It's a trivia question to see if they know what it stands for. That's right. That's right. And I always teased and we teased uh, before the show a little bit about CBGB and stuff like that. But um, first of all, uh, before we get into a little bit of your background, I do want to thank you. You were out there at uh, Walmart this past weekend helping us collect school supplies for our Centralia School uh, Supply Drive. Appreciate that. Not every principal, not every teacher does. The ones who do, I truly appreciate because it was hot out there. It was hot, but it was great. You guys did an awesome job getting that organized and getting those donations for our kids. We stuffed the bus. It and was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. And it's fun. And the best part about it is probably some of your students were out there collecting for their fellow students. And that's always nice to see. Yeah, it is. And it, it's just fun to see that effort in the community come together to make sure our kids can focus on learning and not worry about the other things they may need to learn. Yeah, and so if you still want to support that school supply drive, you could always uh, make a donation to the United Way of Lewis County courtesy of the uh, Back to School Supply Drive. Uh, you can drop off your supplies. Uh, there's a lot of different locations. Cascade Community Healthcare has one. Alta Zorena Barno has one downtown Centralia. Or you can drop it off at the school district office. And I am sure there are a lot of schools. If you're at Edison or the middle school, you just want to drop off supplies, go do so. It's so great for students to be able to have the tools for success on the first day and then throughout the school year. But with that, Let's talk about you, your new principal over at the middle school. That's cool. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, um, I've been a middle school principal. I'm starting my 11th year. This is my second year at Centralia Middle School, so I'm excited to be there. I was interim principal last year and was hired to be the full-time continuing principal. So super excited to be continuing the work that we're doing there. It's a great staff. Parents have been so welcoming, and the community has been welcoming, and we're just super excited to provide opportunities for our kids to learn and to grow and to help them, support them into what they're going to become. So it's an exciting time. Middle school's challenging. It's challenging, I, I but just, it's super fun. I was just going to tease you a little bit and say, is it is it, it do you call it years in service, or is it a tour of duty? <laughs> is it like military tours of duty? <laughs> it can be at times, but it's also fun. I mean, you see kids it's truly one of their most challenging times in life as they're be going from little kids into young adults and really trying on things and seeing what works for them and and where the boundaries are and oh can I push it here or push it there and, and it's it's an interesting exciting time and I have been doing this for 29 years now so um, and it's almost all been in middle school I did my first five at a very large high school five uh, 3,000 students and so I've either been at high school or middle school in uh, middle school is where it's at it's it's just fun yeah. and the kids still want to have fun with you and be involved with you and they enjoy the little bit of quirkiness because they're pretty quirky too well if you're just tuning in to let's talk about it uh my special guest this morning is principal gb uh gregorch bennett over at centralia middle school we're talking a little bit about what's going on uh, over at the middle school students parents and and getting back to school preparing to get back to school we're all doing it all the parents even grandparents are starting to get back to school so uh, stay tuned. Uh, this is a really good show and a good episode. So uh, Principal GB, one of the things that you brought up earlier was the fact that 
kids are going through a lot of changes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hormonal, their bodies are changing. They're trying to fit into their bodies. I mean, you always see the kids starting to run like, uh, like giraffes, right? They're not necessarily as coordinated as they were. You know, you've been doing this for a long time. I mean, uh, how do you, uh, as an administrator or teacher being in the school, help these kids kind of find their way? Yeah. A lot of what we do is just coaching kids and, and it's kind of like you're trying out things, but we're trying to direct them in a positive path and where they may be in their futures and to help them see because up until this point, everybody's controlled what's happening for them. Right. And now they're starting to get a little bit of that freedom and try some things on for themselves. But they also still need to be guided in the right direction. And so we try to get really involved with them and really proactive. We talk about kindness. We talk about kindness to themselves, kindness to others. We're doing a lot of social emotional work. All of our staff work on that. And that's um, just maturity. It's, it's things that used to be maybe common sense that aren't as common sense anymore so yeah. like um really digging in working on some of the issues that we have with what does it mean to be kind what does it mean to reach out and help somebody when they drop their books you know and how big a deal that can be even though we don't feel like it's a big deal so really focusing in on some of that stuff and as we work with our middle schoolers it's it's challenging time and our parents often will say well my kid doesn't want me around my kid doesn't want me involved and actually they really do they're going to be surly and gnarly at you but they actually that's when they want you to wrap them up and be closer with them yeah. and be like spend some more time with me they don't know how to use the words they don't know how to look cool and ask you to give them a hug because they don't know how to do that and it's not cool to them but really what they need is you and your time yeah i think that's a really important important point i mean I, my daughter's 12 and so she's at that middle school age and still rolls her eyes at me uh but you can't give up right you you get that you were the same way we, oh, all, were, we all were the same <laughs> way but but the important thing is they want to make sure that they can screw up they can maybe be mean to you and have a bad day but know that you're their safe place mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i mean that's so important yeah one of the best analogies i ever heard with this was when you are on a roller coaster and you're pushing and you're flailing all over the place, do you want that safety bar to give up and let you go? Or do you want that safety bar to hold you in tight right? and, and keep you on your guide rails? And I love that analogy because it's perfect for middle school because they are pushing, they are flailing, they are trying things, they're going off the side rails, but they need someone to come back and hold them in tight yeah. and, and be there for them and make sure that they aren't totally going off the rails, that they can't recover it from it. And so I, I love that analogy. It was outstanding. Well, and, and, and this isn't just, uh, you know, a discussion without any basis, right? You you did a survey, yeah. and that was some of the responses of the middle school students, right? 100%. So talk to me a little bit about that. So last spring, we had an expert come in, and she talked to our kids about their um, electronic footprint and what employers look at, and that they look at all your social media posts, and they look up everything and what you're saying, and um, how, to, how to monitor that and how to give yourself a good social presence out there in the world and then so after that we um, asked students what did you learn and then we asked them a couple open-ended questions and one of the open-ended questions was what do you wish your parents knew about technology and the number one thing our kids asked was I wish they knew that I want them to get off their phones yeah and when I've had conversations with parents about that, and we've had honest conversations, the parents have said, well, the kid's on their phone, or they don't really even want me involved with them. No, the kid wants you involved with them. Play game night, have board night, play a card game, go for a walk. They want you involved, um, and they are going to say it loud and clear. They are going to act like they don't want you there. That's part of middle school. That's part of that mm -hmm. adolescent development. But they really do need you there. And that's what they say when they think nobody knows it's them talking. That's what they told us. Number one, please get off your phones. Right. And that's kind of a learned behavior, right? Or, or we're, we're teaching students and parents almost to relearn behavior. I mean, recently, the state of Washington expanded that Dolly Parton Imagination Library, right? It's about reading books zero to five. That's a learned behavior because if you read with your children early, that becomes kind of your tradition and your history and you all maybe read together. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing with phones. If, if you put your phones down now and start putting aside even 20 minutes together, dinner or whatever, 
maybe that's what students need to see and parents need to see. It's retraining parents as much as students. Exactly. And we're at this point where parents now, they've grown up their whole life with cell phones. They've been on it their whole life. And so... Except for um, like you and me. I know. I, it <laughs> I wasn't It wasn't one. there. I know. Thank <laughs> goodness for me. I Yeah. Um, and, and one of our biggest things is like our middle schoolers are not going to be the people they are when they are 20 and 30. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness, you know, like I'm so glad I'm not the person I was when I was in middle school. Um, Although it was a great learning opportunity for me. I learned a lot. I made lots of friends. I got to play sports and all that, but it was a very social time for me as well. Um, And, and, you know, I had good, strong parents that were there guiding me and directing me where I needed to be. But that's the thing. It is a growing and learning stage and where you do need good, strong people involved. And part of that is even if you're watching a TV show or a movie, if your phones are put away, you can talk about the movie, laugh about the movie together. If you're on your phone, you may or may not catch the joke. Your kid's looking over you to laugh with you about something and you didn't even know what's happening. So re-engaging with those directly around you. And as much as I want to pat myself on the back, I mean, I've had that happen too. I mean, I have a 10 and 12 year old and there have been times Mm -hmm. we've sat down for a movie and I'm thinking about work and I pick it up and one of them will turn to me and say, did you see that? And I didn't, I missed it. And Mm -hmm. and I do feel guilty. Um, And sometimes I'm like, well, I got to work. I had to check this and and they're disappointed. And Mm -hmm. that's a perfect example. And that's a perfect um, I think example of what those students in your survey told you, Hey, uh-huh. we want you to put it down. Yep. And put it down and just have a conversation. One of the things um, parents also explained to me is they're like, I asked them what they did today. They said they did nothing. And how do I have a conversation with that? So one of there's so, three th- questions that we found that have really helped parents talk with their kids. Number one was what was your best party about your day? One, one thing that was really good about school today. Because if you ask them what you learned, they're going to say nothing. They learned all kinds of stuff, but they just don't know what to tell you. So if you ask them what the best part of their day is, they can usually clue into that. Okay. What didn't go so hot today? What's something that didn't go great today? And then the third question that I've been seeing pop up a lot of different places is, what did you do to help somebody else today? And really challenging their child or themselves to get outside themselves again. And, and do something for someone else, whether it's clean up something from a lunch table, pick up books, say hi to the new kid, ask the new kid to come sit with you. So those three questions I think are huge. So what was your best part about your day or the high that you had today that was really good? Second question, you know, what, what was something that was challenging for you that you weren't really excited about today? And then third one, challenge them to what they do for someone else today. Well, I'm hoping that parents and grandparents are listening to that because those are three really, really good questions, especially when your phones are in another room and you're sitting down over dinner together, right? Right. That's right. the perfect place to do it. Mm-hmm. If you're just tuning in to the Let's Talk About It show here on AM 1470 and 104.3 KLA and KMNT, I'm your host, Peter Barno. My special guest is the principal of Centralia Middle School, Laura Gregorich Bennett. And we're talking about back to school, a very, very timely uh, episode. You are listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. Stay tuned. Let's Talk About It Sunday edition will return in a moment. Okay, and now back to business. Listen on the air and online. Good morning. You're listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. This program was pre recorded, so no live phone calls on today's show. And so we're back with uh, with the uh, principal of Central Middle School, Laura Gregorich Bennett, or as, I, as we're calling her now, because that's a mouthful, uh, Principal GB. Um, we talked about the survey, we talked about what parents can do. One of the really cool things you and I talked about before the show started was a little bit about um, parental involvement, PTOs, PTAs, watchdogs, the importance of showing students that that, that, that there's a parent and teacher involvement, your parents are involved, there's there's good role models, both women and men who can be in the classroom, they can help out. Uh, Talk a little bit about the importance of that, because 
where you came from, and I didn't even ask you that earlier, but we will talk about that. Uh, where you came from, they had watchdogs too, and that's one of my favorite organizations. Mm-hmm. Watch House is super cool because it really concentrates on getting men into our schools and interacting with kids, especially when we have so many homes that are um, led by females. And, yeah. and often we don't have men in the homes. Uh, we see that a lot. And so having those connections with, with men in, in our lives is important, just like it's important to be connected with women. So, um, But a lot of our kids are lacking that. So having yeah. watchdogs active and involved in our schools is awesome. It's called Dads of Great Students. And yeah. I know a lot of our elementary schools here do that. But, um, you know, it is something that I've seen in a, a middle school setting, too. And it's, and it's fun. It's good. And it's um, from just coming in and playing games with kids at lunchtime, um, doing some organized kind of activities getting kids involved in different opportunities from chess club to kickball to maybe a three-on-three basketball type thing but just interacting and and talking with kids we've also had watchdogs that have come through and work with kids on homework or they read aloud with kids which can be so helpful for increasing reading comprehension and vocabulary so watchdogs has been fun something we're starting at the middle school now is uh we called it pack it's a parent action council or pto we're still kind of playing with the name but we're trying to get parents involved um in our school and it's basically an advisory council so that parents know what we're doing in our schools um often there's misinformation out there about things that may or may not be happening in schools and we really need parents to understand what the education is that's going on we need to be in partnership with that so our students know what's happening and our parents know what's happening for their future, what is important, what we're doing, how we're supporting their th- kids through some challenging times, getting them that support. So getting parents into our schools and also partnering with our parents from things to like, you know, providing lunch to the teachers and just having those connections. Um, one of our very first meeting, our parent group just said, we want to know our teachers better. We feel yeah. like we have an opportunity to get to know our teachers in elementary school, either from different game nights or art night or math night that's going on and that kind of fizzles out at middle school so how do we get to know our teachers and really know what's happening so when Susie comes home and says you know so and so lost my homework and says I can't do it they you know the parent also feels comfortable enough to say hey I just saw miss so and so and I'm not sure that's how she rolls let's have a conversation so so that we're opening those bridges and we're working together because we all have the same goal we yeah. want our kids to be successful. We want them to have bright futures. We want them to be happy. And the best way to do that is through partnerships, through gr- having great schools, great education. And the the way for our schools to be strong is through that strong partnerships with our parents and our community. I, I mean, I, what you're saying, I think, is going to be really refreshing for a lot of our listeners because I, I think – Uh, folks, especially parents, really want that relationship. They want to have a collaboration in the school. And that doesn't mean parents walk in and say, this is what you need to teach and this is the new curriculum. But I mean, I remember going in and helping a teacher grade. And now I would never do that in middle school because I'd probably get it wrong. Uh, but I would <laughs> with I was at a cheat sheet. Uh, but I did so, you know, at Edison and Oakview and some of the others. And it really got me involved to see, OK, so what's really happening in the classroom and to trust teachers more? Um, because a lot of times I have the inclination when my son says this happened, I'm like, eh, I'm not so sure it worked out that way. <laughs> like, I really want to talk to your teacher first, because I think a parent, if you don't know your teacher, and you don't know the school, and you don't, you're not building yeah. that relationship, you just need jerk to believe your kid that ah, there's always a gray area. 100%. And so I think I think what you're talking about is going to be really refreshing in Centralia. I think they're going to love the fact that they can get to know their teachers, get more involved. And I mean, the, the elephant in the room is that we had a double levy failure, mm-hmm. right? Parental involvement is going to be even more important. Watchdogs and 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 however we do this uh, parental action council is going to be helpful mm-hmm. at, at, to teachers, to paras, to administration to have an extra set of eyes and people there. Mm-hmm. It, it's huge. It's huge. Um, and kids act differently with people they know who know their parents right. too. So even if it's someone down the street or someone who kind of knows their son, they they just act differently. And and that's part of what we want to instill in them is like this we're part of a community. We're here to take care of one another. We got to lift each other up. We've got to work hand in hand and and that is great when parents can come in and help support us with that and um 
And also if parents don't understand something, like why is this happening or what is this happening or I heard this, that they feel like they have open lines of communication and, and people to talk to to help understand whether it's new math or, you know, <laughs> what this is happening over here or ha- what's going to happen with sports in Centralia, that you have people you can talk to because we know how important those yeah. things are to our kids and molding our kids and we've got to work in partnership with our families. You know, new math. I hope my wife doesn't listen to this show Sorry. because because she's a math teacher and I always talk about this this wonky new math you talk about. I'm still carrying the one when she's doing something else, counting by tens. And it took me a while to really get it. But um, but you're right. I mean, the way we teach evolves over time mm-hmm. um, and even even math counting by tens. Uh, but it's important to get involved. And that's that's something that again, I think is going to be really refreshing for a lot of our folks. The other thing I really wanted to talk to you, because you've got a, just such a breadth of experience, not just in the middle school, but with with school generally, having having been involved in the system for 29 years, at mid, middle school for 11. Mm-hmm. So I'm a teacher, or I'm a parent. I've got a kid going into middle school. What's the one piece of advice that you would say a parent should really heed or follow or start as a new tradition or something awesome thank you that's a huge important question and the number one thing is we have to limit our kids access to electronics period hands down it's not even close um yeah getting your kids out active involved with you as a family playing game night having dinner together a few times a week as you can i know with sports and activities it can get challenging with work it can get challenging but the number one thing is to make sure you're monitoring their electronics. Yeah. Have your parental c- controls on those. Make sure you're monitoring it closely. Um, I strongly recommend that electronics are put away and charging in parents' bedrooms at night. If they're charging on a kitchen counter at 1 and 2 a.m., your kid is on that phone. Yeah. And so, and then also using parental cl- controls so that no messages are going through during the school day. Yeah. Um, that is hugely distracting to kids when they're getting messages from their friends on Snapchat or their mom about where to go after school. If you have it turned off from 7.30 to 2.30 for the middle school and it can turn back on and they can access stuff starting at 2.30, that is perfect because it keeps them focused. Also at night, our kids need to get sleep and they need to be protected from social media. Social media has things out there and kids say things to one another that they would never say in person. They would never say out loud in front of a parent or a teacher. And so we've got to protect our kids. When I was in school, if someone's being mean to you, you could walk home at the end of the day and you never have to hear that kid again. You get a break. Right. If your kid has their phone all night, they never get a break from some of the difficult, challenging things. And some of the difficult, challenging things may just be their friend didn't comment back on their photo. So now they think everybody thinks their photo's ugly. Well, nobody mentioned it or their parents took their phone away so they haven't had a chance right um i had a situation um i was working on with a young man and and um he got his phone taken away by his family and and he was extremely upset because he couldn't let his girlfriend know that he didn't have his phone and his girlfriend was upset and wanted to break up with him because he didn't return her texts and her likes and stuff on snapchat and so um you know communicating out to families working together and saying hey all of our kids are turning off their phones at 9 p.m so that they're not getting angsty they're not getting uptight about the fact that their friends have not responded If we all join together as a community and say, hey, they're off by nine, all of our kids are going to be in bed, get a good night's sleep, it helps with mental health, it helps with social awareness, it helps with learning, it helps with them being a good member of your family as well, because they're not as surly. So it's really, really important, and I know there's a lot of stuff I packed in there, but number one thing, get the parental guardianship on your phone so you can monitor what's happening. Your phone company will help you do that. Put them away at night. They need to charge in your parent bedroom so that they're not sneaking them at one and two in the morning to get on social media. Okay. Or yeah, give them a flip phone. If they really need to call you after school, they can use a flip phone. Social media. It is so damaging to our kids. It's damaging to adults. It's so damaging. And look, it it wasn't that long ago that we had a, a, a a young girl kill herself, commit suicide. Mm -hmm. um, And there was some online bullying and and it's, it's a very common nationwide. Mm -hmm. I know that for my family, uh, our internet allows us to to see what uh, what uh, what you know what um, the products or what what phones or what things are on using the Wi-Fi, and you can deactivate them. 
So we deactivate them all at night. I mean, my, my wife does that. She's very like, oh, look, Sophia must be doing this. I mean, so we check to make sure, but, you know, and, and I think that's the easier way to do it is to set a timer that your internet automatically deactivates stuff. Uh, not everything, but certain things at certain times so you don't have to remember it. But it's angsty for us. I mean, not just the kids. I mean, the things that middle schoolers and high schoolers are going through, adults go through. Oh, yeah. And stress them out. Think about it, someone who's young. 12 years old, and they're, they're trying to, to navigate that world. And just like when we post something, say we post something about being at a wedding or, oh, look how sweet my husband did this for me, and we get 100 likes. We're like, oh, that's cool. Everybody liked what happened. Our teenagers are going through that tenfold with no experience and, and very insecure times that if they're having someone say, um, you know, you look ugly, go kill yourself. They think of that literally. Yeah. And our teenagers are saying this to each other regularly. And they're getting desensitized. They're getting, yeah. But they're getting desensitized about saying it, but kids are hearing it. Yeah. And that, it, it's really traumatizing for our kids and it creates a lot of anxiety. We're seeing huge anxiety with people and how to interact socially. We're um, seeing anxiety about being separated from their phones because they're addicted right. to the cell phone. And so as parents, if we set those restrictions, and it can help our kids' mental health and can help them grow into the humans we would like them to be. Well, and one thing that you mentioned a lot, I think it's a kind of a theme that I like hearing, is that you know we're also trying to raise good human beings, right? It, I mean, education, is is math and science and english but it's also at, especially as you're developing as a person it's just being a good human being i mean mm -hmm. you don't have to mimic what you're seeing on the nightly news you could actually pick up someone's books you can do nice things and that's just as satisfying mm -hmm. which and should be what, and that's what we want we want a good community we want to grow centralia strong we want to you know have that pride in what we're doing and we're, there's so many great things going on and and the way we get there is by raising good humans and you know and having good citizens within our community yeah and 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 that's not necessarily just the schools uh, I mean, right. job, right? And that's why I think that plus really engaging the parents to say, you got to do this at home because as a, education starts and ends at home. The kids wake Correct. up in your house and they go to bed in your house mm -hmm. and you need to be able to, as a parent, monitor that. And if there's a good partnership with the middle school, then then if everyone's rowing in the same direction, then we can change the trajectory of our community. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool is like when parents band together and come together yeah. and join forces for the good of our community, for the good of our kids, for the good of our schools, we can do incredible things and yeah. we can we can turn things overnight just by coming together and, and doing some simple agreements about how we're going to treat each other, how we're going to act, what we expect. and. The social media pieces about you know what our responsibilities are and some parents don't realize when i meet with them some of their kids are posting things that the parents are legally responsible for yeah and so it not only is good to teach your kids the proper things it helps protect you too because if your kids are engaging in things they shouldn't be you're legally responsible for anything your child's doing and yeah. so that's you know, I know there's a lot of loopholes and different things that yeah, I get that, but you know, I mean, you're talking also, to a lawyer. <laughs> I know, I know. So I, I, I was thinking that, but you know, there, yeah. you know, there are things where we have seen, you know, yeah. things happen where where parents weren't involved and weren't monitoring, and and they've been held accountable for things their kids or, have or, done, or worse, they did know it was happening and they didn't stop it, mm -hmm. and that's especially in the bullying mm -hmm. side too. Exactly. All right, so we, we're wrapping up this show. We, I mean, there's so much to unpack. We're most certainly going to have another show, too. <laughs> um, uh, Principal uh, Gregorich Bennett, uh, Centralia Middle School, if you want to leave our listeners with kind of one theme or one thing uh, as we're entering the new school year, what would it be? Just, aside, from, aside from social media, which, yeah. boy, I mean, <laughs> I, I agree with. Yeah, it's just that community partnership. We're so excited. There's so many great things going on at our school, in Centralia Middle School, at all of our schools. And to have those partnerships with our families, with our community, 
are just huge and we're going to have a great year. I mean, I'm super excited. It was first day back with staff today and our staff are ready, excited to have your kids and just, you know, take it to the next level. Our theme this year is leveling up. And so it's like taking what we're doing and just taking it to the next level and helping support our kids um, and partnering with you guys as parents and community. So that, that partnership I think is going to be huge. Well, thank you for joining the show. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About Sunday. I'm your host, Peter Rabarno. And for all you parents, grandparents, guardians, all you students out there, I really do hope you have a great, successful year. I'm sure you will. Uh, But most importantly, the one theme that I want to leave you with is exactly what uh, Principal GB was talking about, which is monitor social media and help raise your kids to be good human beings. I think that's the best way we can improve our community. I hope everyone has a great Sunday, and thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk About It Sunday on KELA AM 1470 and KMNT 104.3.